a new project entitled The Adventure of the Vocabulary of the King James Bible. And my name is Dan Wooldridge. And this is presented over a series of chapters as a narrated PowerPoint deck. This is chapter one and it forms part of the introduction. And I welcome you to the enjoyment and the adventure of the King James Bible, where you can discover for yourself the things that are freely made available to us from God in the English language. The Adventure of the Fab vocabulary of the King James Bible is an adventure worth taking. Discover the predictability, precision and purity of the language of the King James Bible and discover it for yourself. My heartfelt thanks to all those who provided me with inspiration, resources, concerning the study and understanding of the scriptures. I've been taught the scriptures for as long as I can remember, and many in the early days were not what I now call born again, but the foundation of the love and the trust of the scriptures was laid in me. I was born again in 1963, since then, those who have preached to me and taught me the Word of God have had a profound effect upon me. And I want to thank all of you who have had a spiritual input into my life. I have no way of knowing where I got any source thoughts from. My main source of information and inspiration is, and always has been, the King James Bible. Some of you have stuck in my memory, and I will try to give credit where it is due if I remember that I'm directly quoting you. To my teachers and th helpers, this material is made possible uh, because of you. And I thank you for the privilege and joy in sharing in them with you. And I'm grateful for the hundreds of writers and teachers both classical and contemporary, who have shared their thoughts and teachings with me and helped me learn those truths that I live by. I find it impossible to write, preach, teach or share what I know without somehow unconsciously quoting or being influenced by all the many people who have helped me. And so if I know and remember that I am using a copy of an exact reference uh, that I'm using, well, uh, I'll try and make note of it. That said, this is not a thesis, nor is it a referenced uh, research document. This is an easy to use workout to get a hands-on grip on the way the English language and the vocabulary are used by God within the King James Bible. If you printed out the workbook or you've got access to it, you'll be able to complete the notes which uh, emphasize some of the main points. Do you understand how important it is to know the vocabulary, its grammar and, and punctuation of any written material? The Word of God in English. Enter the King James Bible, also known as the Authorised Version, also known as AV 16 and 11 Holy Bible. Written in a specialised, elevated form of early modern English. Tried and true, 
tested and trusted. Do you believe and trust the King James Bible as the Word of God in English? Now's not the place to go into it, but uh, it's a definite advantage. God has made known and preserved His Word, and it's made and has His Word made clearly known in the English language and other languages as well, of course. Do you believe this? This isn't the place to present the scriptural basis and proofs for believing that the King James Bible is the word of God in English. But if you do believe this, then you're blessed. Now, just a bit about me. I was born in 1943. I was given one of the best stars of UK education that money could buy. I grew up in an age when nothing was impossible, post-war. I was never in a class of more than 12 and always had individual tutoring. And I actually lived at school. I didn't go home every night. I was immersed in the school. I ended up rebelling against academia when I understood that some of the greatest teachers and scientists could fudge their results. Actually, their results were often a hypothesis, but were presented as cast iron facts rather than good, reasonably sound explanations. Actually, it was a study of geology that convinced me that the halls of academia are somewhat tainted. I wonder if you implicitly trust scientific reports and clinical studies. I walked out on formal education when I was unable to sit my A-levels in the UK. I was supposed to, pit, to uh, sit my A-levels and then take responsions at Oxford University because I needed an O-level in modern language for university entrance into University College at Oxford University. I left... Uh, uh, just before sitting uh, four or five A-level exams and my responsions, that's comparatively simple questions on Latin, Ancient Greek and Mathematics to Oxford. After I'd gained uh, nine or ten O-levels with the Oxford and Cambridge board. Incidentally, these included subjects like English, literature, geology, physical geography, pure mass, applied mass, history, etc., etc. I think the average subjects taken in those days of O-levels were four or five, and uh, you needed two A-levels for a university entrance. My parents called me to join them in Australia, as my mother was not expected to live. And I arrived in the new land in 1961 and soon became saved through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you know the Lord Jesus as your own personal saviour? I sincerely hope that you do. I thought that my mind should be moulded and renewed by the word of God after my experiences uh, with the academics and intelligentsia and now becoming gloriously and wonderfully renewed and born again and enjoying the reformation of my life. So I abandoned the avenues of secular higher learning. The greatest gift that my schooling gave me was to teach me how to think 
I believe that thinking can be taught, and I believe we should learn how to think. Am I qualified to present this, this study? Well, the King James Bible was written to teach English reading and comprehension. And I take my hat off and respect anyone who survives the halls of academia and still truly honours the word of God. They must be respected because they have emerged intact. A note about my methods here. I use a lot of repetition. You can read and study this work by beginning at the start, or you can turn to any section of it. If you're reading something that is new to you, then work the workbook and stay with the concept until it's part of you. You'll find plenty of repetition. Repetition is handled differently in the King James Bible than in our common English usage. In most cases, in the King James Bible, repetition is used to explain or define the context and the meaning. For instance, in modern English, we would use repetition to add extra elements or expand the context and the meaning rather than explain or define the meanings. A simple King James Bible example. I've noticed that word definitions are linked together by the simple use of the word and. Here's an example of and used in this way. Genesis 2, 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in, because that in it he had rested from all his works which God created and made. A simple meaning of the word created is the word made. This is an example of a repetition that expands the meaning. We need to understand the vocabulary of the King James Bible. After we're familiar with the actual vocabulary of the King James Bible, we will move on to looking at how this use of English clearly establishes doctrinal truths and errors. Perhaps you should ask yourself if you consider that doctrine is important. Lots of people today do not. So then, how do we understand the English of the Word of God as used in the King James Bible? Language is vocabulary which is made up of an understanding of words. It's made up of the definitions, the meanings, the grammar and the punctuation. This combination allows us to understand the communication, comprehend what is meant by what is written in the King James Bible. Would you like to understand the meaning of what you read when it's written, and particularly in the Bible? If you don't understand, then you cannot respond accountably. Now, I don't think I will or can teach all the correct terms for all the points of English grammar. No. <laughs> I want to show you how to understand 
what you're reading in the King James Bible. And that will lead you to know how to read the Bible and read it with skill and understanding. And this will also help you if you ever have to read the King James Bible out aloud. You will be able to clearly communicate its meaning to those who listen to you. If you know what the words actually mean. To understand the vocabulary of the King James Bible does not necessarily give you an understanding of the full meaning of the Word of God as such. Essentially, the truth of the Word of God can only be spiritually discerned, but anything the Spirit of God reveals to us must be able to be confirmed from the written, written Word of God. It's very important to understand this principle because it saves us from having a private interpretation of the Word of God that is unconfirmed by the witness of the Word of God. So anything that we receive from the Holy Spirit that is spiritually discerned is also confirmed by what is written within the written Word of God. The Word of God on earth and in heaven. If you're certain that the King James Bible is in fact the preserved pure Word of God translated for us by God into the English language, superintended by Him, watched over by Him, kept by him, then you'll agree that the word of God in heaven, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, and the word of God in earth, that is in the form of the King James Bible as far as English is concerned, absolutely agree. We know that truth is revealed by the Holy Spirit. But we also know that all genuine truth is confirmed by the Word of God, both in heaven in the form of the Lord Jesus Christ and on this earth in the form, as far as English is concerned, of the King James Bible. You can see how vital it is to be able to comprehend the actual meaning of the English in order to have a firm foundation for our faith. You have to be prepared to admit that if you have a revelation that you think comes from God, but that revelation is contrary to what the Bible actually says, then you must be prepared to admit that your revelation is not correct. For our faith to be pure, it needs to come to us by the word of God and not by the word of man, not through the imaginations of man, but straight from God's heart, God's word, which he provides in a written format as a secondary witness to what his spirit reveals. Do you appreciate how vital it is to be able to understand the vocabulary of the King James Bible in order to be sure of the purity of your faith? It's vital for us to be able to understand that the actual meaning of the English that is used in the King James Bible, if it is going to be any form of standard or plumb line, God made man in his own image. He made us male and female. He made us for fellowship with himself. Made for fellowship. Look at Gen Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 27. 
And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. It was more than just animal instinct. God, in Genesis 3, 8, second part, and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They heard and they understood. They could comprehend it. They could talk back. They could communicate. Not like a pet communicates, but with real language. Communication is at the heart of fellowship. We see this because as soon as he created us, he starts to talk to us. Language is the mark that mankind was created and not evolved. Language is common to all groups of people, whether isolated or not. It is a definite marker of creation rather than evolution. He talks to us. Not as unto an animal, he talks to us expecting comprehension and accountable responses. He talks to us because he has made us to be able to perfectly understand what he says. This must be so because as soon as he starts to communicate, he lays down some communication that will have far-reaching and eternal consequences. I hope you understand why Adam was the one who sinned and Eve was the one who was deceived. God is supposed to be just and fair. He tells Adam that if he disobeys a certain commandment, he will lose the life that he had just been given. Imagine how unfair God would have been if Adam truly could not comprehend this communicate, or if this communication was delivered to be deliberately confusing and not perfectly understood by Adam. In other words, it, it was God meant quite deliberately that Adam really didn't understand what he was talking about. An interesting note is, are we accountable for the things that we don't know when it comes to the laws of the land and particularly driving on the road? But Adam definitely knew there was nothing he misunderstood about the communication. So here we arrive at the end of chapter 1. And I hope that you're ready to continue with this adventure in chapter 2.